Um, well, it's good to see everybody in the Lord's house today, and we're going to do a, um, you know, I don't know if you guys got to see it last week. I did a, a podcast on the uh, OU softball team, it, and, um, and it inspired me to look at Hebrews, uh, in the 12th chapter of Hebrews, the writer who I believe is Paul, but we really don't know who wrote Hebrews, right? But uh, most theologians believe uh, that, that are smarter than me believe it was Paul. And one of the things that he does, that Paul does in Hebrews, but he also does it in Corinthians, he, uh, he blends the concept of athletic events and citizenship. And especially where he has a, he, he, he paints this picture that, that our lives are in this arena and we're in a competition. And, 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 and you see these runners who are training with weights, and as they run to the finish line, they're shedding these weights that they were training with, almost like a sanctification. And, and some will grow tired and weary, and others will preserve until the very end, and then they get rewarded. And that's kind of the, the, the how, how uh, well, I shouldn't say Paul because we don't really know, but that's how the writer of Hebrews describes this in chapter 12, verse 1. And then he stresses the importance of finishing this race in the heavenly city uh, known as heaven. And the readers of, of, of these themes here uh, see uh, a central theme that's, that we have to have here on earth. And that is patience and endurance. And I'll tell you guys, uh, we need both of those in our Christian lives, desperately. And the Jewish believers uh, got this letter, uh, and it, because at the time they felt very, very weary, they felt very, very tired, uh, just like the ministry in the Christian life can do to you sometimes. And the writer of Hebrews asked him to look at three areas. He asked him to look at three divine resources. One would be uh, looking inwardly at ourselves first to see what we can improve in our life. The second he started referring to a cloud of, uh, 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 of uh, uh, he started referring to um, uh, some, some heavenly giants that have been there before us. And you're going to see them here in a second. And to look at their, what they've done, past winners. And then the third thing, and what the OU softball team did this last week, and with their theme, he wanted us to focus on Christ. So those three things. And the title of our message tonight is The Christian Race endurance with him wins and i'm going to preach expository word by word verse by verse and we're going to read chapter hebrews chapter 12 verses uh, one and two that's the only place we're going to be hebrews chapter 12 verses one and two therefore since we are also surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight the sin so easily ensnares us that we also run with endurance the race that is set before us looking unto jesus the author uh, and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we, we love you and we praise you and we thank you and we thank you for, um, we thank you for this text. And, um, and I just pray, Lord, that, that, uh, that it would touch somebody tonight that's watching this service. And I thank you for letting me come into your house and say, Thus saith the Lord. And we ask these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so, so we're going to look at verse uh, 1 here. And we see, therefore, and remember what the, what's the there, therefore, okay? Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by a so great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, every sin, which easily ensnares us, and let us run with the endurance, the race that is set before us. So when we look at this, we ask ourselves, what's it there there for? And what that is defined as since. See, the writer's taking us back to chapter 11. Now, what he's talking about here is some, 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 some men and women that are giants in the faith. Noah, Sarah, Abraham, Jacob, Moses, Rahab. They're all mentioned here in chapter 11. You can go back. But they're previous examples of heroes of the faith that us, that we can look at. The writer uses these examples as a truth of God promises that teaches us 
that our belief and our faith is shown with our actions, and that's how we display our righteousness, through actions. Now, there's, a lot, there's some controversy on this, <coughs> surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. <coughs> when you see the Greek interpretation of this, it actually literally means that there's a great cloud, and these witnesses are up on this great cloud, <laughs> and they are, they are looking down on us, okay? So, so the great cloud of witnesses, are these, they're up like in the box seats of a stadium, and they're looking down, and, and they're like these, these heroes that are now watching the gladiators in the stadium, and the gladiators being us in the world that are watching us in the arena that we are fighting for Christ. Now, some theologians will already argue that this is a literal, a literal interpretation. <coughs> some, like you're re- really watching and encouraging, okay, uh, that, that you're, they're in heaven and they're just they're, they're watching and encouraging, but some theologians think this is just a figurative uh, rather than literal. Now, frankly, no one knows. Um, you know, no, that would be fantastic if they did. And I know we talked about this a little bit. I don't know if you were there. I don't think you were there for this Bible study, uh, Don, but I know we talked about that a little bit at the Bible study, I believe, a couple of weeks ago. Frankly, I don't know. Uh, we do know, though, what we do know what the Bible says. There, there are some precedents for angels rejoicing, right? You know, when, when, when somebody gets saved on earth. Uh, twice in the book of Luke, he describes it dynamic, you know, with, with angels. And you see it, and you see it there. And, and I'll uh, just uh, quote that. Luke 15, 7 says, I will tell you in the same way that there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need repentance, Luke 15, 7. In the same way, I tell you there is joy in the presence of angels over one sinner who repents, Luke 15, 10. So we know that presence is established for angels, but we really don't know if it is for humans. So I don't know. It would be neat um, if it did, but who knows? We don't know. Someday we will. But one of the best ways to develop endurance and patience is to get to know the godly men and women who have run this race before us. If you think about it. Now, just think about this, what 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 I believe that the correct interpretation of the Scripture is. If you are having problems with your family, okay, all you need to do is go into the Old Testament and read about Joseph. You, you see what I'm saying? If you're having, if you're having, uh, uh, if, you, if you think your job is too big for you, if you think you have, uh, you need to be retired and not serving anymore, uh, and you and you got too much going on, then you just need to study Moses for about an hour. And you'll see what an 83-year-old man does when he walks into Pharaoh's court and he says, let my people go. Just study Moses for about an hour. If you think uh, God is, is letting Satan torture you, you think God is letting Satan harass you, you think God is letting Satan do evil things to you, uh, just go read the book of Job just for about, I don't know, 15 minutes. If you worry about being faithful in a time of persecution, which I think you're going to start seeing in America today, and you're already starting to see this, just go read about, in the book of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Read, read about them. If you're tempted to retaliate, this is what we're going to read about tomorrow in our Bible study in 1 Samuel. If you're tempted to retaliate, to somebody who has wronged you. Go look and see how David handled the situation when, where he was in a cave and King Saul decided to go use the, the restroom in the very same cave that David and his guards were in, okay, when David could have cut his head off right then. See, what he's telling us here is look at the Old Testament to see how the winners handled it, and we can do that in our own life, the great cloud of witnesses. Paul would write in Romans whosoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, and though we have the patience and the, and the comfort of scriptures that might have hope, Romans 15, 4. I can't imagine a Christian life without the Old Testament. I can't. 
And I know there's some, you know, big shot pastors today that just totally blow off the Old Testament. I'll just name his name. Andy Stanley's one of them. He doesn't think we need the Old Testament. He's, he's made that very, very public. But whatever you believe about the great cloud of witnesses, their witnesses were the actions while they were on earth. And it is revealed by Scripture. It's telling us to look at the winners. But notice what he says here. Let us lay aside every weight of the sin. Carrying weight is an awesome training tool. It's an awesome training tool. We carry weight around, right? When I was a kid, you guys remember, and you guys probably remember those. You remember those little ankle bracelets you put around your ankles? They were heavy. And if you thought if you walked with them or ran with them or played basketball with them, man, that was going to make you, that's going to make you fast. I was going to play uh, basketball like Lou Alcindor, man. I was, I was going to be, you, you know what I mean? I was going to be Dr. J. I could jump, you know. Never happened. Today I like to do farmer's carries with kettlebells because when I'm, when I'm carrying something, that's, they say that's really, really good for you to carry things a long ways. And even back in, in Greek and Roman times, athletes would use train with weight aids in preparation for races. They were viable to compete or run a marathon with the kettlebell because that would impede your performance. But you do, do use those things to prepare. You notice in a baseball game, uh, the batter, before he goes up, what's he always do? He puts those ring weights on his bat, you know what I mean? And he does that to, in preparation to, for batting, okay? But to win the race, we must eliminate any hindrances to obstruct our progress. Good things. Or might be considered in today's world, but they're actually sin. You know, it's sin is an obstacle. You got to get rid of dead weight, or you can't perform. You can't function. I'll never forget when I was with the 101st Airborne Division in the first Gulf War. It was really cool because we got to ride everywhere in helicopters. But what was really bad is that helicopter drops you off 120 miles into Iraq, and then the helicopter leaves. Then if you're going to, anywhere you go from that point on, you're walking. You know what I mean? So everything that you got, you're carrying. And, and, and here's the deal. I'll never forget, I had a radio that was very heavy, and I had my rucksack. And I had to separate the two, so I would, my rucksack was so heavy that I just kicked it out of the helicopter when we landed on our first objective. I just carried my radio. And, and I went back almost like the next day and got my rucksack. You know, because it was so heavy, I couldn't, I couldn't operate. I couldn't, I couldn't do anything with it on. And I was, my, my, my biggest fear was I was going to jump out of the helicopter with my rucksack on. I was going to try to walk around with that radio. I'd be start getting shot at, and I couldn't get up. You know what I mean? So, so I didn't want that to hinder me. That's what he's talking about here. The victorious athlete does not d d differentiate between good and bad. Rather, the victorious athlete in our Christian life looks at better or best options. We want to rid our lives of sin. We want to look in our own lives, and we have to take a look at our own selves and see where we can get rid of excess baggage. Because every one of us in this room or anybody that's watching online has excess baggage, which can ensnare us. We need to get rid of which easily ensnares us. The right ear lose to this unbelief without specifically naming it. If you look back at Israel, remember Israel couldn't get out of the promised land because they had things that continued to hinder them. Remember, they walked around for 40 years. Hebrews 11 mentions by faith, through faith, 21 times in that chapter. But notice what he says in verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of the faith, for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand and the throne of God. Now, this is what's fascinating about this verse. This is what the OU softball team used as their kind of mantra verse. Okay, but they used the NIV translation. I'm using the New King James uh, translation. And the NIV translation says, fixing our eyes on Jesus. And they would then use them as a motto of eyes up. So fixing our eyes on Jesus, and they, what, they, trans, what they, 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 they trained that to was eyes up. And that meant they were looking at Jesus. You know, remarkably, these kids had a better theological understanding 
of the joy and the cross better than a lot of pastors, if you're going to be honest with you. Who for the joy was set before him endured the cross. All those words may seem incompatible. They are the essence of an inspiring story. Because I'm convinced if these kids would have lost that series the other day, the uh, good Florida State team, uh, I think their perspective and their witness would not have wavered. They would have felt the same way as they did right here. You see what I'm saying? The cross speaks of agony. The, the cross speaks of disgrace. The cross speaks of scorn, rejection, and humiliation. But crucifixion was a slow, antagonizing death. That's why the writer of Hebrews says we need to focus inward. We need to focus on the witnesses, but then we need to focus on Jesus. Where is the joy in that kind of death? Well, Jesus went to the cross. He endured the pain. He despised the shame. But afterwards, we look unto Jesus as the author and the finisher of our faith. Just like it says there in the, in the Word. What a blessing that testimony is. Jesus didn't enjoy the experience on the cross, but he endured it. He was fixing his eye. Or we were we, we need to fix our eyes on him, completing that work of redemption, bringing glory to God, triumphing over death, over evil, running the Christian race with endurance through him to win. And in closing, how do we endure? We look at past winners. We look at the example they set for all of us. We look inwardly at ourselves when we could do better. And most important, we look at him. His time on earth, our Lord lived by faith. He trusted in the Father to guide him day by day. And although we can't fully comprehend the mystery of his divineness, but we know that he prayed and he quoted scripture and it reminded us his trust in God. And I'll just tell you also, guys, Jesus endured a lot more than those heroes of the faith. Despite the suffering and shame, the physical pain, Jesus persevered to complete the work for us with every head bowed and all eyes closed. Father God, thank you for this word. Thank you when we run the race of life, we win with you, period. Thank you for the examples you've given us in the book. And you know, you've never really, the things that we, 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 we think are big deals down here on earth, Lord, sometimes we, we over-dramatize things. And Father, I just pray that you would give us the, the courage, the endurance, the patience to run the race to glorify you. Father, we thank you and we praise you. And we ask these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.